President and dear colleagues, uh, Mr. Barroso, this was, I think, your last State of the Union uh, before the elections, and you have also spoken about these uh, elections. But let me be very frank. I, I think there is absolutely uh, today uh, no room for uh, complacency, uh, because in my opinion, um, a number of important things, maybe the most important things, are still to be done to tackle uh, this uh, crisis. And it's not uh, that I'm saying that myself. There was a last week's edition of The Economist. They wrote, and I quote, uh, our sleepwalking leaders must start now to agree, agree if we want to avoid disaster. Uh, the Economist was not talking about the Commission and the President of the Commission. I think that uh, the sleepwalking leaders that they meant were more uh, to find in the Council uh, than in the Commission. But I think it's a fair uh, analysis uh, of what is happening. I think that uh, uh, we have to be clear here, uh, dear colleagues, this crisis is not over. And it's true, we have given a whole bunch, a whole range of early signs of uh, recovery, but I think we have to make a realistic assessment, a realistic analysis of the situation. These first signs of recovery are more the proof of the fact that we hit the bottom of the recession. The bottom of the recession, and that means that we enter in what I call a second phase of this crisis. I think it's far too easy only to see uh, the negative points, as has been done a few minutes ago. I think it's also not fair only to see the positive signs and say, okay, uh, it's over now, we are going up again, that it's not true. What we in fact see is a second phase in this crisis. A long period of economic stagnation we shall enter. What I call a Japanese winter. You know, in Japan, they had also, in the night, is a real estate bubble. They entered a, a non-solved uh, banking problem. And for two decades, they got low growth figures, high unemployment figures, of growth between zero and two percent. And that is what we are falling in now, at this uh, moment. So my problem with the State of the Union, Mr. Barroso, is that it fails to show uh, a consistent vision to that problem. How? to avoid a Japanese winter, how to avoid two lost decades of economic stagnation in the next 20 years. What we do to avoid that? What is our common vision so that we fall not in that trap? And personally, I think that three things are necessary. Three big reforms, three uh, big reforms towards a new Europe. The first is, and you have spoken about that, and I come back to this, a real banking union that is more than the single supervisory mechanism that we have uh, today. The second is, and that was not enough, I think, in your vision on the future, we need a more integrated Eurozone with a real government in the Eurozone and in the European Union, with a common treasury, with common financial instruments so that we can finance our investment at a lower interest rate. We are in an average paying 2% more interest in Europe than, for example, in Japan and in America uh, to finance our investment. So how can we recover? And three, I think also that we have to open the issue, yeah, is it not necessary to have a, a broader uh, task also for our central bank, like the Bank of Japan is doing, like the Federal Reserve Board in the United States are doing, that is that next to inflation targeting, you should have also GDP targeting gross domestic product targeting. And in fact, Mr. President, what I want to do today in this uh, debate on the State of the Union is to do a proposal to our Parliament now to, to do something in these last eight months. Let's be honest, we can do this last eight months as we do it now with the big fights uh, between uh, the, the, the different political parties and the Council, and then we arrive with nothing at all because we shall enter in the election uh, debate and the uh, election campaign. Or we can use this time, this seven, eight months, to pick up a number of files where we are saying that is an added value for our people and for our citizens. Let's do a number of crucial files and dossiers in the next months so that we can also do something concrete in this seven, eight months of this period of this legislature. My proposal are two things. We have a proposal now, dear colleagues, from the Commission on the Resolution Fund to complete the banking union. Why not 
on a fast track adopt this proposal of the Commission. I think that everybody here, all the groups, can agree on the proposal that Mr. Barnier has put on the table on the Banking Union and the Resolution Fund. Let's do a fast track and let's immediately start negotiation with the Council on, on this. If we first of all start with a report and making our own mandate, then we, we shall lose months and months and we shall not enter in the discussion with the Council. And my second proposal is in the same sense, in the same direction. You have now a package on the digital agenda to complete the single market with open internet, with lower roaming uh, tariffs. Or we are discussing this and we are losing months in the Parliament, or together we are saying, yes, okay, this is a good proposal of Mrs. Cruz and of the Commission. Let's go forward and let's use a fast track. Let's immediately start the negotiation. Why losing months and months to define a mandate on this and then losing that time and having nothing at all when the elections are there? No lower roaming tariffs and no open internet. So my proposal to all the groups is that um, in the next weeks, in the next months, we make a deal on that. And the same is happening for the MFF. Sorry, and I'm saying that to the Council, I'm repeating to what Mr. Svoboda has said, there shall be no agreement with the Parliament if for the first time what you are giving on the MMF is in fact breaching your word. That is what you are doing. You are putting on the table a budget 2014 that has lower figures than the MFF that we have to approve. How can that be possible? And finally, Mr. President, I am concluding with that. I think that the next election shall not be a big fight between the left and the right. I like that, eh? certainly when you're in the center, eh? you have all the, uh, all the problems uh, on your head. I think it's more between Euroscepticism, who think that you can put the world outside your borders, and the pro-European forces. And I hope that all the pro-European forces can be united to beat Eurosceptics. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.